Hey guys, it's Miller. Welcome to uh, my first interface tutorial. Basically, what you can see on your screen now is what we'll be producing, something very similar to. So, I uh, hope you enjoy watching this video and I hope you learn a lot from it. I'm going to start off by making a little layer, getting our polygonal lasso tool, and drawing our basic shape over the shape of the original interface that you can see on your screen. So, we're going to do the exact same thing so we get something very accurate. On your new uh, layer that you've just made and made the selection on your screen as you can see now just hit alt and backspace of the black color that you have filled in on your palette and drag it down um, just because this is where we're going to work our interface with. You next want to left click the layer that you've just made go to select modify contract and contract by say 4. Actually you might contract it by one more so I'm just going to do it again modify contract and by one more so it's 5 altogether 5 pixels. You now want to make a new layer and fill that in uh, black and fill it in the layer that you have, the color that you have selected. I'm just going to make it a dark grey color, something similar to what you can see above. I'm just going to make it a, I'm just going to make it the same color as the grey color you can see above on the outer bevel for the the for the metallic interface that we're following. Um, so I'm basically just going to do a color overlay of a dark grey and I'm going to bring the opacity down to 94%. Then I'm going to make a gradient overlay underneath that of a grey to white linear gradient and then I'm going to go up to bevel and emboss now and basically mess around with the depth and the sizing and take down the highlight. The white highlight is what uh, basically makes it stand out. So I'm just going to mess around with these, bring them all down a little bit until it matches um, what I can see above. There's no real there's no real path you have to follow for bevel and bosses, you can just do whatever you think looks best. Gonna add a drop shadow now, um multiply and make the colour black and I'm just gonna mess around with the sizing and stuff also again just to add a slight black shadow just underneath the shape. Um now I'm gonna go to my shape that's on the inner layer, the black shape on the inside of the uh, metallic surrounding if you wanna call it that and uh, I'm just going to make the selection go inwards again so if you want to go to select modify and contract and contract it by another three and then make a new layer control shift and N I hit alt and backspace which will fill that space in and now I'm just going to add an inner glow of a dark blue like you can see above so now we have a shape inside a shape inside a shape and this is the inner shape the furthest inner shape and I'm going to add an inner glow of that blue color uh, color dodge is the blend mode that you're going to go for. Uh, blend mode, the color dodge might even work here, so I'm going to change it to screen, I think. Yeah, I'm going to change it to screen because you can actually see the screen in this situation, and I'm just going to bring down the size again, so it's just, just, just a thin line um, around the outside, and it's not too heavy. And next, we're going to add a gradient overlay, so just click gradient overlay, make sure it's the black to white gradient, that's a linear gradient, and just take down the opacity till about 5 until it just about shines through as you can see now it just adds a bit of shape next we're going to add a stroke around the outside so just go to stroke make it a black and make the px about 2 or 3 it depends on uh, the space you have in between the absolute outside of the layer and the inner shape that we're working with now so it just gives a little black uh, tint around the inside there's something here I've spotted and I'm not quite happy with it so I'm just going to change the depth from 42 up to 52 and take the size from a 9 down to 0 and that just gives a very light line around the outside of the bevel on the outside which I think looks a lot more slick. What we're going to do now is we're going to do that little metal mesh on the left side of the top one as you can see there. We're going to put that little grill in so you're going to google metal mesh and you'll find this. It's like the third image that you find so just copy and paste that into your picture and you're going to transform that down uh, till it's in proportion with what we need. So once you've sized it down to the appropriate size, you're going to get. We're going to use the same shape as the shape when the interface above the one that we're working with now. So you're just going to get your polygon and lasso tool and make a new layer. Control Shift and N to make a new layer, um, which I'll be repeating a lot through this tutorial. And you're just going to draw across the shape uh, above it to um, basically get that same shape uh, which is what we want to use and we're just going to drag it down and we're going to fill it in by on that new layer you're just going to hit alt and backspace and that'll fill that in just going to size it down a little bit control, control or command t and just gra drag the corner and hold shift to scale it down just, uh, just so it fits in there a little bit better we're now going to double click the layer and change the color of it to uh, maybe a darker or a lighter grey even, it's completely black now but we're going to change it to a darker grey and uh, we're going to put that um, 
metal mesh over it firstly though um so we're just gonna left click uh left click the box of the layer uh, of the shape that you just made and then you're going to hit Control shift and i on your keyboard and hit delete which will delete the area surrounding it and um, so basically means the metal mesh will just sit into the shape that you just created which is what you want uh, you're going to hit Control l on your keyboard and just drag this black arrow up a bit which will uh, basically make the level of it darker um, and that'll start making it darker which is what we need uh, now we're going to add a black stroke of px1 and bring the opacity down probably just a little bit so it doesn't stand out as much and then the next thing is you're going to want to do an inner glow of black change the blend mode to normal and just bring in the size and the shape and distance just till it kind of suits your liking you'll be able to see whenever the shape is perfect so just keep messing around with that also an inner shadow from above will uh, just top that off and then the final thing we're going to do is a satin which basically makes the whole area of the shape darker so make sure it's multiply keep the angle 90 degrees straight up which means that little circle arrow there is straight up and just change the size and distance until the whole shape uh, kind of gets that perfect darkness that you want Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a gradient overlay, a white gradient overlay light on the inside of that metal mesh just to add in some more fine detail. So you're going to left click uh, the image of the metal mesh layer you just made which will select the shape around the outside and you're going to make a new layer. Go to your gradient, uh, your linear gradient, gradient tool and make sure the white uh, is the color that you have selected in your palette. Basically just hold shift to make a vertical or horizontal line and you're just going to draw your lines like so uh, by holding shift on your keyboard at the same time and um, just in the top left uh, kind of general direction of um of your shape and then once that's done and you're happy with this the light that should be perfect around there cool and just change it to overlay uh, overlay doesn't really give much of an effect so soft light should but i'm just going to mess around with some of the blending options here to see what else looks good Um, just tapping around here no I think soft light or overlay will look the best. Sometimes bevel and emboss can give a nice effect, but in this case, no, it doesn't. So I'm just going to give another inner, inner glow of a black, uh, just to kind of top off the inner shadow we had above. And then I'm going to change back to soft light because soft light looked, soft light looked a lot better. So it's basically just added more lights on the inside of it. Nextly, we're going to draw a shape similarly to what we just did there, except on the right side of the uh, shape. Um, as you can see on the one above that I recently did. Um, basically, just get your polygon and lasso tool, and on a new layer, just hold shift to get the diagonals perfectly, and hold shift also to get the vertical line across, as like I'm doing now, horizontal line, sorry. And um, just basically make your shape like so. And once it's done, fill it in by hitting alt and backspace and that'll fill in that area with the color you have selected in your palette in this case is white i'm going to change it to a dark gray if not black completely that should do there that's okay and i'm going to do an inner glow now and change the blend mode from screen to normal and the color from that white color to black and basically mess around with your size and distance as we have been doing and um, just so it looks like it's sitting in to the metal interface so as you can see now it just adds a little bit more depth and it looks like it's kind of grooved into the metal interface as such so now i'm also going to add a gradient so i'm just going to add the color overlay as the color we use already had take down the opacity to 95 percent and with the gradient overlay at 100 percent which is the black to white linear gradient uh, if the color overlay is at 95 percent that gradient overlay underneath it will shine through and um, so i'm just going to change the angle of that to the opposite 90 degrees um, which looks better and i'm going to sat in that shape altogether which will uh, give it a little bit of a beveled look but it's not actually beveled it's just adding in some darkness uh, sh some darkness in some areas some darkness and shading it's basically what sat in does now what we're going to do is what we did uh, similarly with the metal mesh on the left side of this which is where we added a light, uh, a gradient overlay, linear light. Um, but to do this, we need to use our regular rectangular marquee tool, hold alt and left click just across that area of selection, which we selected by left clicking the box of that uh, shape. 
um, which gives you that selection. So yeah, as I said, get your rectangular marquee tool and hold Alt and drag it across the shape you want to remove so it subtract, subtracts it from that selection. Now what you want to do is go to your gradient linear light tool and make sure white is the color on your palette and just basically draw your white line overlay it and uh, take the opacity down to whatever you want which is going to give you that detail as you can see on your screen now. So now we're going to click into the detail of the light we just made, made, which I'll repeat again, is overlaid onto the text. It's not normal. The blend mode is overlaid. That's uh, a key element to making this look right. I'm just going to bevel it and take down the highlight of the screen a lot until it just looks like it's engrooved into the text. It kind of blends in a little bit more. Make sure you take down the highlight quite a lot, down, down to maybe 15%, otherwise it won't look right. And I'm just going to add a drop shadow underneath it to uh, bring it out a little bit more. kind of gives it a lot more depth into the metal. Uh, now it looks like it's metal uh, metal interface altogether. This is these final details is what makes it look really good. Um, so this is a key uh, key factor if you want to make this look right. You have to kind of get that that light correct, otherwise this isn't going to work. Next, what we're going to do is basically make a new layer. Control Shift and N on your keyboard, and you're going to get your polygon and lasso tool and just draw the shape. Uh, that you can see on your screen now. Just draw this shape, holding the shift key to get those uh, those angles perfectly perfectly straight. And you're just going to fill it in by hitting Alt and Backspace once you've done so. Um, now I'm going to double click the layer, double left click, and I'm just going to bevel it and change the color and gradient of it to a darker gray so it kind of matches the metal behind it. Um, so I'm going to make it a dark gray like so and let the gradient shine through a little bit. Bringing down the depth and the size and maybe satining if I sat in this all together, it might make it look a lot better, but I might just change the, the color overlay of it to a much darker color. If I just flip the color of the gradient upside down, because that will suit it better and just make it a lot darker. Soon I might even go back and get rid of that gradient altogether, because I'm not sure it looks right. And not inner glow wouldn't look good at all. Basically, you're just going to right click and convert that to smart object, then right click it again and rasterize the layer so it's completely uh, editable. And you're going to zoom in and just get your eraser tool, which should be at a PX of zero, uh, no, at a hardness of zero, PX of say 20 or 30, and just uh, dapper around the top of it, erasing that shine on the very top, which is what you get off the bevel, which will um, basically make it smoothen into the metal so it looks like it's all one. It uh, looks like it's all one piece. Nextly, I'm just going to go back to Satin and I'm just going to mess around with the uh, darkness on this uh, metal bar going across because I don't think it's uh, blending in that well. So I'm just going to change the contour lines of the Satin. You can just play around with it yourself until you get something dark and something that looks shaded around like yourself. Um, that looks... That looks fine there now, I think. So we're going to go now back into more detail with the uh, metal mesh part. You're going to make a new layer, go to your polygon and lasso tool and just draw a shape on the inside like you did yourself, like I just did there. Um, and once you've done that, you're going to uh, double click your layer and you're going to go to inner glow and go to the blue color that uh, we've been using throughout the tutorial, the blue color to for the fine details. Color dodge usually looks well here. In this case, it doesn't. So I'm just going to go and put it as color dodge but to bring the fill right down to zero percent which means the color overlay won't have any effect but uh, all the other effects will so uh, color dodge looks okay in this case it looks a bit choppy but sure you guys get the idea it just uh, unfortunately didn't turn out this well uh, in the uh, metal interface above the one that we're following um in that case it did it looks a lot better but um, i'm just going to play, play around with it here until i get something similar just messing with the choke and size, um, it looks okay. I'm not really sure, we'll just leave it at that, I suppose. Bring down the opacity and the color dodge until it blends into something you're happy with. And we'll leave it that at that, you guys get the idea. Just unfortunately didn't turn out as good as the original one did, um, but sure these things happen. Nextly, we're just going to add in some lights uh, to add in some small details. So you're just going to make a new layer, Control sh or Command Shift and N on your keyboard. Go to your gradient uh, tool, make sure white is selected, and go to the kind of spotlight um, gradient and just kind of 
dapper around some lights as you can see there by left clicking and dragging once you've done so change the uh, blend mode of that layer to overlay and you should get the kind of uh, lighting effect as so that's the most basic lighting effect you can ever do on Photoshop if uh, there's any other ways um, that people know that are easier feel free to let me know but uh, that's the best way that I know so and um, that's a pretty cool trick to know if you didn't know that already um, and nextly I'm just gonna get that bar layer that you can see I'm just gonna copy it by holding control J and my keyboard that'll duplicate it and then uh, go to edit transform and flip horizontal we'll flip it horizontally and I'm just gonna slot it in like so um, on the other side um, don't ask why this is a completely random interface interface is interface and this is just the kind of interface style that I do um, where I just mess around with uh, different lights and different bevels and whatever else different. I just try and make the interface as cool as possible nextly which is the final step we're going to um, duplicate duplicate everything that we've made in this tutorial so you're going to make a group by hitting control or command G on your keyboard or just uh, hitting the group icon at the bottom of your layers, layers tab uh, that'll make a new layer just pretty much hold shift to drag uh, to control um, everything to grab all of your layers basically click left click the top layer and hold shift and then left click the bottom layer and it'll select all the layers in between drag them into that group and then you will have everything you've made in one one group you're going to right click and duplicate that group just the group icon where the little folder is you're going to right click hit duplicate group and that'll give you two of everything that we've made so you want to go to transform and flip vertically and basically the duplicate that you've made will flip horizontal and you can just scale it down by holding control T uh, and then holding shift to kind of shift it scale it down uh, until it gets to around this size and then you can just play around with it until you like where it is in the positioning wise underneath the original one that you did so basically the the copy that you've made you're going to want to drop it down underneath your original group and then just tuck it in underneath like so and basically now you have what i think looks like a pretty slick uh, beginning of an interface and if you can even duplicate those again and keep going duplicating them and making it bigger and then expanding on your in interface to do whatever you're going to use it for this is on a background template so i'm going to make a background of this interface when i'm done with this tutorial but uh, you guys can do whatever you want to it obviously when you're done and uh, if you have any questions or queries um, in the comment section below just let me know if there's any other tutorials you'd like me to do or if there's anything you didn't uh, understand with this tutorial if you have any questions I'll get back to them uh, as soon as possible like I'm on YouTube all the time so uh, I'll try and get back in a few in within a few hours or whatever I'm just gonna copy out those metal uh, bars that you can see from the original interface and I'm just gonna bring them underneath the original uh, interface that we've just made um, just to kind of top it off so it looks like it's coming in from the size from the sides and basically that's it um, for this tutorial today so I've been Miller and thanks for watching <laughs>